everyone, my name is Lauren. I'm an ICU nurse and I enjoy helping people memorize physiology and pharmacology. You're watching my series on antibiotics and I'm going to include this video on antifungals in that series as well. So I'm going to talk about three different classes of antifungals. The first one I'm going to talk about is the azoles. So the azole group um, includes everything that ends in azole. So fluconazole, also called diflucan, um, myconazole is another one, ketoconazole, and there's more, but they all end in azole. All right, and the real reason for this is because there's this azole ring um, in chemistry, and that's what anti these antifungals interfere with. But an easier memory trick for that is that you have fungus in your azole. Um, probably in reality, you have fungus in your vagina or in your GI tract, your mouth, throat, uh, esophagus, stomach, but it's much more memor memorable to imagine you have fungus in your azole. So you can remember azole is an antifungal. Another antifungal here is nystatin. And I remember that one because of how I use it. It's a, um, it's used for mild um, thrush, candida, and I use it a lot for prevention of thrush. So people who are immunocompromised get this a lot. So people with AIDS, um, people on chemo, I gave this in the NICU a lot um, to babies whose immune systems weren't totally developed yet. So you swab their mouth with it, um, or they can swish and spit, or swish and swallow, depending on the orders um, and where the thrush is. So that's nice stat. And the third one I'm going to talk about is amphotericin. called amphotericin B, and the trick for this is it's amphoterable. This is used for very severe fungal infections um, because the side effects are just terrible, amphoterable side effects. Um, so pretty much every body system is affected by amphotericin B, so it's only used for very severe fungal infections. Um, it's given IV and the infection has to be bad enough to use this. So my advice is don't memorize every single side effect of amphotericin, amphoterable. Just remember that it has amphoterable side effects and pretty much every organ system is affected. So we'll start head to toe here. You get a headache, uh, drowsy. You know, if we move down to your GI tract, you have nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, other GI side effects. Um, it's almost like an anaphylactic al allergic reaction, right? So you have a fever, high fever, um, dyspnea, tachypnea, uh, move to our heart. We're going to have decreased blood pressure. Um, it's going to affect our kidneys, affect our liver. It's going to affect our skin. Um, terrible rashes, you get really bad um, shaking chills. So my memory, not really memory trick, but the way I remember this is that I remember that you pre-medicate with um, Tylenol and steroids. Um, because the side effects are so terrible, um, it's almost like pre-medicating someone who often gets reactions to blood transfusions. You're going to give them Tylenol because you know they're going to have a fever. You're going to prednisone because you know they're going to have this systemic um, reaction. You can give them Benadryl. Um, is actually more common than prednisone. Um, 
So you can remember that amphotericin has just amphoterrible side effects and pretty much any side effect is going to um, be present. So I remember you have to pre-medicate. And think about if you're memorizing this for an exam, um, they're probably not going to say which of the following side effects do you get with amphotericin, a headache, um, nausea, vomiting. They're probably going to be something like you need to teach the patient that they might have shaking and chills, and that might be normal. Or you give amphotericin and the patient develops severe shaking um, and high fever, what do you do? And if it's a different medication, you might say, oh, this is an allergic reaction. I need to stop the infusion immediately, flush, um, and give Benadryl. But in this case, you might need to recognize that this is a normal side effect. Amphotericin has terrible side effects, and they are normal. Um, so they're not necessarily an actual allergic reaction. So those are your antifungals. I hope that makes sense. Um, comment below. Let me know what you thought. If you have any questions um, or ideas for future videos, thanks for watching. And thank you to allnurses.com for help getting my videos out.